from everyone. We thank God for the beautiful wedding of uh, Dr. Muros and uh, Pauline yesterday. And uh, let us sing him today. Uh, 276, have thine own way, Lord. Please, in your heart, pray for them so that God may bless them and uh, bless many through them. Isaiah 49, verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who is like our mother? Who is like our father? Who is like our mother? Okay, please rise if you are able and let us sing him. How great thou art. We'll sing verses 1 through 3. How great thou art. No way, how great thou art. <laughs> I see the stars, 
Today's scripture is Romans 12, 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For, by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Just For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mary. We thank God for his wonderful word. May the Lord appear to us through his word. May we hear his voice. Let us sing him a printed copy, 277, more like the master. May, may God really help us to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12. Romans has three parts. Chapter 1 through 8 teaches us what the gospel is. Paul says, gospel is the power of salvation for those who believe in Jesus from the first to the last. Apostle Paul really, really teaches us 
how the death and the resurrection of Jesus really gives us grace of being united with him and how spirit of Jesus dwells in us and how the spirit of God raises up from the body of death it's really really wonderful so many uh, Bible scholars say romance is the diamond of the Bible and I agree yes then in Romans chapter 9 through 11 Paul deals with very very difficult question of why Israel failed Paul delineate this in terms of God's long-term salvation plan and he concludes that all Israel will be saved that's really remarkable that really helps us to really pray for uh, people of Israel and uh, we really hear many encouraging news that many Israelites are turning to the Lord through the prayer and many people and many people's labor and chapter 12 through 16 is about practical living of Christians who have knowledge of gospel, doctrine of the gospel. Their practical life it shows a practical life. And today we'll start the first part of the practical living of a Christian. Yes. Okay, let us read Romans here, chapter 12. Okay. Chapter 12, verse 1, with one voice, one and two, with one voice. Okay, is in our worship sheet, page 2. Okay, let us read. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and the perfect will. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices to God, holy and pleasing sacrifices. Your bodies actually means life. Offer your life as a living sacrifice to God. That's your proper worship. We worship God on Sunday. We worship God on other special days. But our daily life is a worship to God. That's what this world teaches us. That's a very important thing. Our daily life is a sacrifice to God, holy and pleasing, living sacrifice to God. From the time we receive the mercy of God, we live each day as a worship to God. Is my life pleasing to God? 
is my life. This really is a very, very pleasing fragrance to God. Yeah. We have that consciousness. It's very different life. We are almost reminded of Noah. After the flood of Noah, the world was full of dead animals, dead people everywhere. All those dead bodies showed that humankind or Adam kind deserves to be terminated. God loved Noah, so he could have just taken Noah in his hand and brought him heaven. Actually, God did. God took away Enoch from a very uh, uh, sinful world to heaven. God could have done that. That would mean the end of uh, humankind, Adam kind. But you see, God is the God of love. Psalmist often says, Praise be to our God, His love endures forever. God not only loved individuals like Enoch and Noah, but God loved Humankind, Adam kind, that's the really wonderful thing. So God would not terminate humankind. No, God would destroy, destroy. Yes, and Noah understood that. Noah understood. So from the first moment he came out of the ark, it's amazing, he brought these clean animals to God and offered them as burnt offering, living sacrifice, offer them. Burnt offering was thanksgiving. Also dedication. So in a sense, Noah was saying, Oh God, thank you for having mercy on us. Thank you for giving us a second chance. Help us to dedicate our lives to you, the life of humankind to you every day. And he offered Clean animals. Some people may wonder why clean animals. Clean animals like the all this. Unclean animals, more like Noah's time. Animals, wait, some animals are very violent, like violent people. Like a raven eating dead animals, or sometimes fight against living animals. And Noah didn't offer it. Noah offered. Right? These clean animals who are not engaged in those things, violent activities. Yeah, it was very, very amazing. And what does the Bible say? God said, God looked at Noah and his offering, and it was like pleasing aroma to God, beautiful smell. It was a smell of thanksgiving that was pleasing to God. Smell of dedication, new dedication. God knew that humankind was evil in the inclination from childhood. Yeah, God knew that fully. But he would love this humankind and restore. Wow! He would send Jesus Christ as a Savior. This is just a 
amazing how faithful and how dedicated our God are to us. I use the word dedicated. God is dedicated to us. Can you believe that? Is it amazing, isn't it? God is dedicated to us. God is dedicated to restoring us, bringing us to heaven and sharing most wonderful relationship, intimate fellowship with God in the house of God. And we will be seen forever. It's amazing, yes. And Noah did not conform to the pattern of people who are violent, who sought their pleasures, and then perished. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 3 says, Just before the flood of Noah, sons of God, or leaders, spiritual leaders, sons of God, so, daughters of Adam, daughters of men, who were thinking about only things of the world, and they just treated marriage as just physical desires, gratification of their desires, and that's all. Instead of treating marriage as a holy matrimony, and the family of God for serving God, raising up beautiful children of God. And Holy Spirit reminded them that was not right. But this people of God would not listen to the Holy Spirit. He kept on ignoring. And then the Holy Spirit left them. That's what Genesis chapter 6 3 says. Pattern of people in the world is like that. Ignoring the will of God, ignoring Holy Spirit, and just following their desires selfish desires or sinful desires. Basically, they live their lives for themselves. They have no consideration for God or God's will. Paul says, after we receive God's follow Jesus Christ, we need to be renewed by the sense of God's mercy and live daily life as a worship to God. Let us think about this mercy of God. We need to have a profound sense of God's mercy in order to be renewed in our mind. What were we before God came to us through Jesus Christ? Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Without exception, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And what is the wage or result of sin? Romans 6 23 says, The wages of sin is death. The outcome of such life of uh, just following one's desires and life of sin is death. Total separation from God is death. But God had mercy on us. God had mercy on us and He sent Jesus Christ to the cross where Jesus would die for our sins. 
God raised him from the dead. Romans 6, 10 says, When we believe in Jesus, we are united with Jesus in his death and the resurrection. We are united. That's really amazing. And God treats us same as Jesus. God raised up Jesus from the dead and God would raise us up. And Spirit of Jesus would dwell in us. And we cry to God, Abba, Father. God, you are our Father. We are his children. And people of God joyfully carry the cross of Jesus, participate in suffering for the cause of Jesus Christ, and Romans 8, 17 says, We are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ when we indeed participate in Jesus' suffering. And what is more, during this lifetime, Romans chapter, last part of Romans chapter, it says, During this lifetime, God cares for us with inseparable love. That's a really amazing thing. Ins inseparable love. Yeah. God's love is so faithful. God works for those who love Him in all things. And God loves us so faithfully and Paul says we are more than conquerors wow more than conquerors we become powerful through God's spirit we are enabled to overcome sins we are enabled to take part in Jesus suffering and we enjoy heavenly peace yes and many people say wow this life is so hard but how could you be so cruel <laughs> Christians are cruel people <laughs> in the midst of a terrible storms and the troubles they are cruel calm and cool and praise God care for people love people and worship God yes that's normal Christian life so Paul says this is the new pattern of believers and then he teaches us this ethics or morality of Christians in Romans chapter 12 1 through 20 first um, please take note that Christian ethics morality are far superior than worldly morality or ethics first Christian ethics comes from our relationship with God, from deep sense of God's mercy and grace. Mercy. Mercy is God's love toward those who are suffering. So suffering. Yeah. And so Christian ethics, morality is also connected with the will of God. That's why Paul, Apostle Paul says, if we be transformed, if we are transformed, if we offer our lives to God in our daily life, we can discern the will of God. In each moment of decision, we can decide which is the will of God. Yeah. 
Bible teaches us about the ultimate will of God. In John chapter 6 verse 40, Jesus said, My Father's will is that whoever comes to me will not be judged, but will receive eternal life on the last day. 1 Timothy chapter 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 say, it's amazing. God wants all people to be saved. That's why he sent Jesus Christ as our only mediator. In this case, saved is salvation from sin and death and all the power of darkness. Also, salvation is salvation too. So salvation is from salvation from there's also salvation to salvation to eternal loving intimate fellowship with God in the house of God. That's the will of God. It's amazing. Yeah, that's the will of God. Yes. God's will is to bring you, bring me into his kingdom. God's will is to save people, our neighbors, from sins and death and all the power of darkness and bring them into God's kingdom. And they may become really shining stars. And this is for all people. This is really amazing. So Christian ethics morality is based on this marvelous will of God. Yeah. So, in our church life, in Romans chapter 3 through 8, Paul teaches us how shall we consider other fellow Christians. Yeah. Oh, he, he has a gift of prophecy. But I don't. Then it's easy for us to be jealous. But if we think about the will of God, oh, God gave, give the prophecy to that person because God wants to save many. So thank God. And I'm grateful to Him. So we look at others' gift from God's point of view, not our point of view. And we can thank God for the gift God has given me. Oh, God has given me gift of serving. Now, many, many times we do not think serving is gift, but serving is a great gift, actually. People, uh, Paul talks about his gift of really encouragement this is great gift yeah it's whatever is helpful for the salvation of people that's great gift while i was studying the bible about this but one person said oh uh, i have a gift of a drawing something nicely. Oh yeah, that's great gift. Through that, God can help many people to come to Christ. We remember the beautiful story of uh, Zindendorf. Zindendorf, the founder of Moravian movement, when he saw this one painting of Jesus' crucifixion. He was so touched by it that changed his life and he dedicated his life. Oh yes, we see, really. So whatever something we have, whatever gift God has given us is from God, most precious and we thank God for that. So, Paul says, also teaches us that the Christian ethics in the churches, the church is a body of Christ. 
each member is a member of the body, that means most precious, irreplaceable. Yeah. Sometimes in this world we think, oh, that person is expendable. Oh, that person is not excellent. Yeah, that person is ordinary. That's the thinking of the pattern of this world. Oh, that person is, I can replace with another person like that. But in church, in God's community, each person is irreplaceable. Each person is irreplaceably valuable, precious. Like, can we replace our left eye with something else? No. Can we replace our organ with something else? No, it's most important. Yes, we remember one great this uh, sports star when his thumb was damaged. He couldn't throw football. His whole team couldn't do well. Each part of our body is irreplaceably precious, valuable, and each member of the church is irreplaceably precious. And we it place her precious for the salvation work of God. And we should really thank God and uh, appreciate that. Another thing I would suggest to think about this. Some people often say, oh, I do not have a gift at all. But let's think about this. When God created Adam and Eve, God gave them image of God, God gave them word of God, blessing command. God told them to rule over the whole universe according to the will of God. So can we think that God gave them all necessary gift in ruling over the universe? Yes. God would not command them to do something unless He has not given them gift. That means each person has potential to have many, many gifts. Many kinds of gifts. Whatever is needed for the salvation work of God. This is a very important thing. Yeah. These days I often and lamented. Ah, oh, I wish I have a good leadership. <laughs> because when I read it, the Bible says, if God has given you leadership, lead with diligence. <laughs> diligence. Diligence. And from my childhood, I always wanted to be a leader. I don't know why. And, uh, but now, these days I realized, oh, God has given me gift of leadership so that I might serve people and uh, lead them uh, so that they may uh, enter God's kingdom. Well, I was despairing, but I'm very lazy. <laughs> I used to think I was diligent, but Nowadays, I realize, no, I'm not diligent. And I was uh, kind of making excuses. I was saying to God, God, I'm very, well, I'm not a diligent person. I love the studying, reading those things, but I didn't really move my body and diligently walk around. But you have called me to be a Leader, to what shall I do? And God reminded me of Jesus' word. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. 
So I just need to seek God's mercy and try a little bit to serve people diligently. Then God makes me diligent more and more. God makes me diligent. So my point is that God has given you a lot of gift potential. Please look for them. Use them for the will of God. You will be very, very surprised. We find them among ourselves. Some of our members compose beautiful music pieces. Wow, that is amazing. And the others are saying, oh, they are writing poems. Others are saying, oh, I can serve people. Yes, God has given you great gift. And when you use them, God will give them more, bless them more and more. Even God will use you even to the end of the earth. So, yes, may God bless you and the heart of Christian ethics is love, active love, on that part. We'll think about it next Sunday. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have had mercy on us when we were in sins and when you were enemies. Your love for us, your mercy for us was like that of a mother for her young children. O oh God, our Father, by your mercy, we have been given the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now help us to remember your mercy and offer our daily lives as offering to you. May each day of our life we are offering pleasing and holy to you. Help us look at all people from the point of God's ultimate will of salvation and let us thank God for the gift of others. Let us thank God for the gift you have given us. Let us use them. Ask more. And, O oh God, O oh Lord, our oh Father, vitalize your people, make their lives joyful, make our church vibrant. Father, O oh God, oh God, a very, very full of life. We pray that you may bless all our Flint churches throughout the world and all the churches, all the ministries. Oh, Jesus Christ, to be filled with sense of God's mercy and holy sacrifice and gift of God. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. Let us sing him yes, more like the Master. Okay, printed copy is in our worship service packet verse 2 and 3 more like the master page 4 277 more like the master will sing verse 2 and 3 <clears throat>
Thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. Jorge Muros and Pauline who married yesterday in Texas, El Paso, please pray that God may bless their family. God may be the owner of the family and bless them and uh, watch over them, help them, and bless many through them, yes, and ask for, please pray for the safe return of Mission Joseph and Teresa Gu. They went there to congratulate them. Um, we also uh, okay, the uh, please continue to Pray from this week, our church, Flint Church of Chicago, our church will begin to send our 
evangelical team to University of Chicago or community around Chicago and this area. And uh, so please pray for this and uh, uh, please pray for our this, uh, Pastor Ratner in Nepal, our Flint Church in Nepal. His son has uh, serious damage in kidney, both kids, both of kidneys. Please pray for his successful surgery. And uh, um, please pray for peace in Ukraine. God may really uh, stop this war. And uh, uh, we are praying for uh, healing concert and uh, mission convention in Eastern Europe in two years. Uh, we are thinking about having it later, but then this Ukraine war took place and we realized we got a hurry. Yeah. Especially when the, the top leader of Russian Orthodox Church really supported this war and the praise soldiers, I was shocked. Oh my God, this is not just a political strike, but there's a great spiritual darkness is here. And so uh, our church is this healing concert and mission convention in Eastern Europe will be very important. I mean, we will do what we can do and invite people from Ukraine, Poland, Hungary, Russia, or many, so that we may really think about Jesus and write poems or music, those things a lot about that has God in it. So, and uh, also we want to pray for raising of Christ-like leaders. Yes, please pray for it. And uh, okay, thank you. The we have a Jesus culture. Gallery doctor as <laughs> just uh, making the my daughter. Uh, she's a lawyer and she says some talent in the, this uh, art and <laughs> she made it. And uh, it's like our Jesus culture gallery ministry, maybe dynamic like a dolphin and <laughs> swimming all over the world. And please pray that God may help our sister church, Flint churches in many countries to develop Jesus Culture Gallery. And uh, many people may write and beautiful things and play. And uh, in two years, we will have an international healing concert. Uh, uh, one place will be Krakow in Poland and some Budapest, Hungary, and some the Ukraine and Russia, that area, yeah. We'll have one healing concert right near the Krakow where Polish soldier, while he was ringing bells, Mongolian invaders are coming out, he was ringing, then he was shot by arrow. And he died there. They still, he still stands in every noon. He still be, and uh, uh, okay. Then so our church wants to have a healing cancer so that we may go there and really, really apologize for what the Mongolian soldiers did, because uh, when we search Koreans. And this sang to they were priestly people <laughs> and we are elder brother Mongolians are cousins so we feel we have responsibility to initiate this healing process of paradise and healing process and we'll work with local churches European local churches to do this so uh, please 
prepared some of your poem or singing or whatever, yeah, something your own. Because one of our missionaries to Romania said, uh, playing many uh, professional music, the European local church people do those things really well, but they cannot do original thing. <laughs> if you compose some poem or if you sing some new song or something, that your contribution will be great. That will really excite them and help them and bring many people from Russia, Ukraine, or Poland, or, or from this uh, Hungary. Half of Hungarian population was killed by Mongolian soldiers. It's unbelievable. In 13th century, half of, half of. Yeah. So, and uh, so we have that really obligation will go and apologize and have healing process maybe year after year something yes so please i ask you to pray for north korean god is doing something really really extraordinary yes next year 2023 is the 70th year of korean armistice july Seventh year, so I feel that God will liberate them from seventy years of uh, this captivity, and uh, God is raising up some really great leaders in Korea nowadays who can really uh, lead North Korean leaders. So uh, please pray for this. And, uh, um, okay, please pray about this, whether our church can join in sending uh, some offering to uh, this, uh, this uh, pastor Hong Jung Gil and the South Seoul Church, Nam Seoul Gil. They have been doing this a lot for North Korean peoples and now uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic, Omicron, this variation are uh, really rampant in North Korea. So, uh, the, please pray about it, whether we can send some uh, to help this. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we have today I Cafe after service. We'll have refreshment. Fellowship and I Cafe, Integration Cafe. If you like to some share uh, some your poetry or testimony or some many things, please pray for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me give you benediction. <clears throat> Our God, you are the God of mercy. In your infinite mercy, you have saved us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Now help us to offer our daily lives as a living sacrifice to you. O God, our Father, remembering your grace, as Apostle Paul says, I am what I am because of God's grace. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Fill us with a profound sense of mercy and holiness. Now, when your people offer their lives as living sacrifice to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with them, strengthen them, encourage them each step. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.